How you doing? Um, I'm going to do this video and I want to talk about something. Um, I did another video earlier but this is going to expound on that a little bit. Um, I want to talk about uh, the idea that America is a republic rather than a democ democracy and um, this is philosophy of politics just like I did some other videos, philosophy of science and even some of my videos, philosophy of religion if you will. But this is more philosophy of uh, politics. I'm not anyone political and um, don't really uh, want to be. Um, I have uh, some notes and I just want to go through things and uh, get right to the heart of it. Uh, these are some online opinions that I've read that I just put down on paper of people who have said what a republic is and what a democracy is. This person said, in a democracy, 51% decide the rights of the other 49. In a republic, the rights of 1% are protected against the infringement of the other 99. That's interesting. This second one is democracy is the people rule the government directly. Republic, the people elect representatives to rule the government for them. Okay? Then the third one, um, a democracy is where people directly vote. So 49% can be told, tough luck. A republic elects people to make legislation to protect from the tyranny of the majority. And then this is mine. A republic is simply the corporation of a democracy. I'm going to talk about this whole idea. And if this ruffles feathers, my only hope is that it's a conversation, not a fight. Because... I don't believe in the fight, but I believe in the conversation. Um, I'm not going to get into my views, especially my uh, Christian views. I'm not going to get into them, but it, it's going to be hard to skirt the issue, but uh, I'm going to do the best that I can. I see the Republic of the United States, which is a republic, um, basically in, in, in the way that I see it, and I already gave the quote, but the way that I see it, a republic is when we as citizens have a right to send people to Washington to vote for us. That's, that's really what we have in America. I don't care if people have different um, definitions of how they see a republic with regards to other nations. I don't care about other nations. I, I live in America. Um, it's not that I'm against them, but I don't care what they do. I'm, I'm focused on what we do here. And the truth is, is we elect people to go to Washington to vote for us. The minute you elect someone to go there, mm -hmm. their, their vote is supposed to basically be your vote. So that's why you vote for someone you agree with because you believe that they're going to vote the way you would vote. But there's no rule that says once they get to Washington that they have to follow a certain, uh, you know, what they promised in the election time, that they have to follow it. We know that. And, you know, some would say, well, they won't get reelected, but that's not always the case either. So that's what a republic is. A pure democracy would mean we would have voted over whether or not to go to war in the Middle East for the last 30 years. We would have voted as every single person would have got a ballot to vote if we should have bailed out Wall Street in 2007. That's a democracy. And obviously, when the choice was to bail out Wall Street, in 2007, I never got a vote. All the people that I know that made films online never got a vote. Um, only the elected officials, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the President, and his staff, only they got the vote. So that's what a republic is. A republic is when the heads, all the heads that we have elected, they're voting on our behalf, which means we have no vote. Once we vote them in a power, we have no vote. A democracy would mean we would still have that vote. So we have a republic. That's a done deal. If, if 2007 didn't show that to you clearly, then you're, you're, you're like an ostrich, your head's in the sand. We do not have anything anywhere near like a democracy. There's no way that Wall Street would have been bailed out if it was a democracy. There's no way. And because there's a republic, it was successful. And what we're dealing with right now is the whole idea that the idea that when I say in my quote that the republic is a corporation um, of the democracy, I believe it's very accurate, and I'm going to state why I believe that. 
and you're, you feel, feel, feel free to disagree. But basically, men like um, anyone who starts um, a corporation, they have an idea, they, they invest money usually, they invest time and energy, and a lot fail. A lot do fail, but some succeed. And the ones that succeed, they, they have a consumer base which keeps them in business. That's what a corporation eventually becomes, like Microsoft and eBay and all that kind of stuff. They, the, through competition model, they grow up through the ranks and they assimilate a lot of power in terms of their ability to uh, sway the consumer and a lot of other things. I won't even get into that. But basically, that's what a corporation does and that's how it is built. Just a very, very raw um, explanation. I affirm to you that I believe without a doubt that when this country was started and they decided on a republic, that that decision to to maintain a republic even after the entire United States of America was colonized, I believe that that was a corporation decision by the politicians. It was a corporate decision to assimilate the power and to continue the control, to continue that control grid from Washington. Um, if you know the reasons, and let me go back to this quote real quick, if you go back to the reasons that we were a republic in the beginning and not a democracy. This, this person said, a republic elects people to make legislation to protect from the tyranny of the majority. That's true. That's one of the reasons why America was started as a republic. Just like uh, when we have our anthem, and, and to this republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and to this republic. So here's the fear. When, when we came over from Europe and, and stuff, and uh, the 13 states were colonized, and the Decla Declaration of Independence um, established that. Basically, when we came over, the whole idea was America was getting started, okay? And I'm not going to get into the fact that Native Americans were on the land because obviously I'm not going to go there, but basically that's where it started on the East Coast and we worked our way west, okay? And from the initial 13 states ratified uh, by the Declaration of Independence and eventually the Constitution, from there they decided that the, it must be a republic. That was the right choice and I agree with that choice and I believe that that was the way that it needed to be done because when you're starting something off and you're growing something and it's all based on ideas and it's all based on certain type of liberties and freedoms, there has to be a core, almost like Bill Gates stayed at Microsoft for so long for a reason. He didn't just start it and then leave because it may have failed. And Steve Jobs, when he came back to Apple, became successful again because that core it has to be there. And the core of America was the republic because if you give, if we had a democracy right then and there, a lot of the poor people, which were the majority, just like I, I just read, the majority, you know, um, a republic elects people to make legislation to protect from the tyranny of the majority. The poor were the majority, and there were a lot of fears that the poor were going to elect people they wanted to elect. Maybe boozers, maybe outlaws, maybe people that like to fire guns, and that it would turn into a circus. So by having a republic, they were going to make sure that all these people that had a, 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 a you know, one-on-one -on -one vote, like your vote would mean as much as uh, Benjamin Franklin's in, in a democracy. Your vote means the same. And they said, no, we got to have the smartest people, the ones that have a burden for America, the ones that really want to uh, grow this thing right. we got to have their vote uh, usurp the others, because if not, it's going to be like cowboys and Indians out here the, the entire time. It's never going to end. And I, that's a bad analogy. I should, probably shouldn't use that. I'm sorry if that offended you. But basically, like a circus, it's going to be too much uh, fighting and, and quivering. So this thing has to be started intelligently. So I do agree with that. Because I believe that by doing that, what it allowed is for us to move all the way west. This land would not have been established. We wouldn't have survived if, 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 if we did not have solid foundation with uh, a republic like Bill Gates running Microsoft or Steve Jobs running Apple, doing this thing the right way, and us, you know, all the 50 states eventually getting ratified to the Constitution coming into statehood. It probably would have never made it if we started America off as a pure democracy. It would have died in its infancy. So I agree that starting as a republic was very wise. It was the right way to do it, and it was a smart way to do it. But just because that was the wise way to do it, I see a flaw. 
in, in how they did it. And the flaw that I see is once the 50 states, or at least most of the states, perhaps 45 states, because if you know how the statehood works, I, I have this note. Um, by 1896, 45 states were included in the statehood. That's 1896. 45 states had already ratified the U.S. Constitution. Okay, that's before the Federal Reserve. That's before all the world wars of the 20th century. You might want to think about that. So, at that time, once, once, because look, they started the Republic because they wanted America to grow. Okay, so once America has grown, once it's happened, then why do you need a Republic? It's going to be hard to answer that question. Very hard. Because you don't. You do not need one at that time. Only to control. Only so that the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the President and the people around him can do what they want. Whether that means bailout or wars or whatever. So I think that the Founding Fathers, I don't know if they did this on purpose, which would make them a corporation, or if they did it on accident because they didn't have the foresight, but I think it's logical that what should have happened, the fatal flaw they made, is once a majority of the land, the United States land, was ratified and had entered into statehood with the U.S. Constitution, once that was firmly established, this country should have reverted back to a pure democracy. Because at that time, the same fears that existed of America not working were just no longer valid. That's why they had a republic in the beginning, because they were afraid America wasn't going to work, and they wanted to make sure that it always worked. But once that, it was established that we've, we've got the land, and we've, we're doing good with it, and we're being um, in, industrious with it, and we're growing, then all those fears of why we have to have a republic from the get-go, they're gone. They're, they're over. And by keeping this land as a republic, what it's allowing is it's allowing the power grid, the people, the very, very minority people, the maybe 2,000 people in America, to make all the laws, uh, to do all the voting, to uh, basically do what they want to do. And you can call that ignorance by the Founding Fathers and by the people who ratified, you know, everything and did the legislation back then. You can call it ignorance or you can call it foresight, but the wrong kind. And I know I said foresight earlier because I don't know I don't know their mindset. I, I I'm not their judge, but I but I will say that right now, if you're living in in, in 2012 and you've seen what's happened over the last 10 years, uh, yeah, the government is is handing out money and and acting like it's a corporation, like like they have a complete monopoly, like they're they're a corporation that has a monopoly, and what they say goes in the story. And if they want to bail out the big banks, they're going to do it. And if they want to give power to the Federal Reserve, they're going to do it. And they're not going to, if they don't want to listen to people, they're not going to listen to people. So I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to um, upset people. I'm not. I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to because the way I see it, if I don't think about this stuff, someone else is going to think about it. So I don't. I don't play that game. If I see something, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to describe it to the best of my ability not for the wrong reasons, but for the right reasons, okay? And I already said in the beginning, I'm not about fighting, I'm about conversation, okay? But the whole idea is you're going to have a hard time justifying a lot of what I've said in this video. And I'm telling you that straight out because you might say, well, the same people that started everything and decided to make a republic and left no clause and left nothing in there to revert back to a democracy how can you accuse them of what would happen 200 years later? It's actually quite easy to do because the power has been around for years. Power in politics, uh, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. It's always been the same. It's never going to change, and politicians know this. That's one of the reasons that we had a Declaration of Independence because we knew the abuses of power. So why would you break free from that and then leave no clauses to ensure that that doesn't happen here. Who, whoops, they forgot. It doesn't make any sense. Why was there not 
and a desire to revert back to a democracy? That's a piercing question because it makes a lot of sense and it's not that hard to figure it out. It's a piercing question. So you have to, to question their motives. You have to question, did they establish this republic so that from Washington there can always be that central control? A central amount of people having that central control, having that governmental control that never goes away. That's never infringed upon. Because like I said, the, the people that started this, they know the abuses of power. That's why they separated from uh, England and Britain and that's why they separated because they know the abuses. So then they set up a model that is now lending itself to those same abuses. You would think that if you're walking away from those abuses, you're going to set up a model that is wise, but then in having the foresight that, hey, we've got to make sure that this, this republic, because right now we're making the laws and we're controlling everything, but what happens 100 years from now, or 200 or 300 or 400 years from now? What happens? when th there's so much control. Is it going to be another Britain? It is. It really is. So when I say that a republic is the corporation of a democracy, I mean it. I think it's very accurate. I believe that it is a corporation. It's the corporation of the people. And it's the corporation of the people that, just like Bill Gates had gifts in, in software and Steve Jobs in, 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 in designing, they rose up and, and, and they have solid companies. And these politicians that become a part of that system, they have that foresight and they're, they're, they're birds of the same feather flock together. They're going there and they're using that power and they're using that control. And you, you can never trust man. That's something we should have learned when we came over from Europe. You can never trust man because man's going to always give into that power. So what you do is you create the wisest system you can create, the wisest system, so that anything in man that wants to abuse power is going to be taken away from him. And I assure you, by keeping it as a republic, they did the opposite of that. They gave them freedom to, to make very tyrannical choices. And it doesn't make any sense to me. So it seems to me that the same men who started a republic were dead set on assuring that a certain group of men would maintain control. And I believe it's very clear. I believe it's very difficult to argue, especially in the last 10 years, all the radical, radical choices that have been made from Washington. I think it's very obvious to see. I think it's very obvious to see. And it, maybe 10, 15 years ago, this video would have no teeth. But now that things have fallen out and the bailouts and everything, it's got plenty of teeth. I mean, it's, it's a corporation. They're, 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 they're running the show. they got a monopoly. And, and they got a monopoly over the people, not over a product, over the people. I mean, Microsoft has a monopoly to a degree over software, and, 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 and other companies have certain, or they're gaining toward that monopoly over this and that. But the Republic, I'm sorry, man. It's a monopoly over you and me. It is. And that's what happens when the model isn't wise. Corrupt men who have a desire to abuse power or men who could be easily bought. It's a lot easier to buy 2,000 people than it is to buy 300 million people. In a pure democracy, or if you want to do the 51%, 160 million people. I mean, if you really want to think about it, it, it makes sense. So that's my entire question. I call it a corporation. I see it as a corporation. Just like Microsoft wanting to have its software on every computer on the planet, I see the Republic in Washington wanting to control the people of the United States to every degree, using that control so that essentially we'll be subject. And that doesn't mean they're going to throw us in FEMA camps or this. I'm not trying to say that. It just means that they're in a position where they have that power and we, they're doing what they want to do and they're unashamed about it. And so it's like that whole model, it kind of reminds you of a corporation. It kind of reminds you of someone who starts a product and wants that product to reign over everything. But instead of the republic being a product, it's actually people, but they're reigning over the people, not over an idea like the iPod or some software on a computer. You know, Microsoft, you can almost say Microsoft reigns over computers, and Apple, in a way, reigns over music in the music industry, whereas the republic reigns over the people. Corporation, corporation, corporation. So that's what I think. It's, that's what you get. 
when you set up that type of system, it's going to become what it becomes. And it, also one other thing I want to say, it's not a coincidence also that the Republic and that I say it's a corporation, what entity in the United States of America is responsible for busting down other corporations who try to usurp a, a monopoly over the competition? It's the head head one. <laughs> it's the head corporation. It's, it's the Republic. They're the ones who come after any company in America that tries to gain a monopoly on anything. They bust them down. They regulate it. So it's almost like the king monopoly, the king corporation is busting down anything that gets in its way. It's not a coincidence. What, what breaks down all the corporations trying to gain a monopoly? The biggest one. Okay, so it's the same thing. That, that reasoning that I just put out right now, that alone is enough to, to make you think. I mean, it's there. It's black and white. You just got to kind of see it for what it is. But it's there. It's there. You've got to be honest with yourself. And I'm not against my government. Okay? I'm not. I am pointing these things out because they need to be talked about. Okay? And if you think I'm against anything, you read my writings, you watch my videos, I'm not against these things. I love my government, I love America, and I love the American people. Okay? But I'm against tyranny, and I'm against control, and I'm against people that are potentially in a position to do harm where it could be fixed. That's what I'm basically saying. So, I hope people receive this video with the right spirit, that I'm not trying to play games here. It's a philosophical conversation, okay? Read, watch any of my videos, man. Everything I do is based on a philosophical standpoint. Even, like I said, I'm not going to talk about the Christianity. It's philosophical, man. That's the way that I am. That's how I do things. Everything. Okay? And it's not even fun most of the time. But, basically, that's what I see. And, so, be honest with yourself. Ask yourself what that republic is. Those 2,000 people, and I know it's less than 2,000, but I just use that number. Those 2,000 people in Washington that are, that are signing things, that, you know, that go to war, that do this, that, that bail out Wall Street, that have the power to vote for you, that have the power to come to California and raid marijuana shops uh, that are selling medicinal medicine that the state has already passed. You know, you got to ask yourself, what is that? What is that? You know, and, and then when you see how they act and you compare their actions and you see that they're the one busting down other corporations, you kind of see them as the head honcho corporation. And our founding fathers made that model and, and handed it to them on a silver platter. And i got to question that a little bit, to be honest with you. It doesn't make much sense. Why would you do that? It doesn't make much sense. So I think there's some questions there. I'm not accusing the founding fathers or those people, but it, it should be talked about. Because why would you keep a republic? It just doesn't make any sense to me. The more I see it every day, I just scratch my head. Why did these men decide not to revert back to a pure democracy? It doesn't make any sense. So that's my two uh, cents on that.